Welcome to Training Minutes. I'm Mike McAvoy, the EMS Editor for Fire Engineering. In today's episode, we're going to talk about administering bronchodilator medications by small volume nebulizer and by meter dose inhaler. We'll start with the meter dose inhaler. This is something that EMS providers at all levels have been accustomed to assisting patients with. In the new EMS educational standards, both meter dose inhalers, such as this, and small volume nebulizers, medication that we'll put into a nebulization port, are given to patients at the EMT level and higher. We'll start with the meter dose inhaler. The meter dose inhaler contains medication that's aerosolized and a propellant, which then causes it to squirt out of the meter dose inhaler when you activate it by pressing on the inhaler. Patients sometimes carry inhalers themselves. EMS agencies under local and regional protocols carry bronchodilators that are in meter dose inhalers. And there are times when a meter dose inhaler may be preferred over a small volume nebulizer, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. To give a meter dose inhaler, you first want to shake the inhaler, squirt the meter dose inhaler like I just did in the air to make sure that it actually contains some medication and is working and then deliver the medication to the patient. So our patient may be able to do the meter dose inhaler activation on his own, or you may have to assist the patient to take the medication. If we were gonna assist the patient to make, take the medication, we would ask him to exhale all of his air and then put the inhaler into his mouth, seal his lips around the inhaler, and then we'll ask him to take a breath in. When he takes a breath in, we can activate the inhaler and then ask him to hold his breath for as long as possible and then slowly exhale. Holding the breath as long as possible and activating the inhaler at the beginning of inspiration are the keys to effectively getting the medication to dispose throughout the lungs. There are a number of doses for meter dose inhalers ranging from four up to 10, sometimes as high as 20 puffs of an inhaler, and each one should be done separately with the patient holding their breath for a short period after the medication is inhaled. So that's a meter dose inhaler. If the patient's able to do it by themselves, it may be better for synchrony to have them activate the medication themselves. If not, you can activate it for them. Small volume nebulizers are delivered by oxygen as the gas that powers them and put into a container that holds the medication itself and then can be administered through a device attached to it where the patient would actually put the device in their mouth and seal their lips around it or if the patient's not able to hold the device we can attach it to a mask and I'll show you the mask a little bit later. The device that holds the medication is a device that actually contains liquid. We'll unscrew the top of it and we're going to squirt the medication, in this case albuterol, into the device that nebulizes it. We'll take the albuterol, check the expiration date of the medication to make sure that it's still in date open up the medication, make sure that the medication that was listed on the outside of the package is what's actually inside the package, twist off the top of it, and then squeeze the albuterol into the nebulizer. The albuterol in this case is pre-mixed. That was a unit dose, which means one package of it. And we're then going to attach the top of the nebulizer. You need to be somewhat cautious that this doesn't dump on its side or get shaken excessively because it has a tendency at times to spill out of the nebulizer if you do that. Now we'll presume from the beginning here that the patient could actually hold the medication nebulizer himself and we'll attach it to some oxygen tubing which plugs into the bottom of the nebulizer and creates a venturi effect where a large amount of oxygen is flowing through the device because it goes through a very small pinhole and magnifies the flow of oxygen. And we'll turn the oxygen source on to somewhere between six and 10 liters per minute. If you go much above 10 liters per minute, there's a tendency for this tube to blow off of the bottom of the nebulizer and stop delivering medication. You can see 
the medication being nebulized out both sides. This extra piece of tubing helps to contain the medication so that as the patient breathes in and out, it pulls extra medication back into the patient. We can hand it to the patient. Many people who are using nebulizers such as this have experience using them. If not, we'll ask the patient to seal his lips around the device and to just breathe normally through the device. Now when you're using a bronchodilator such as albuterol, one of the early things that will happen to the patient is some loosening of secretions and production of extra sputum or extra phlegm from the lungs as those secretions loosen. And so people may become coughing, they may start to become tachycardic from the cardiac effects of the albuterol, and they may actually uh, sometimes become somewhat nauseous from the albuterol itself. If the patient is not able to actually hold the nebulizer, and for example was on a non-rebreather mask or some other oxygen delivery device, you can detach the nebulizer from the patient mouth adapter and attach it to an actual oxygen mask. You may have a mask that's able to attach directly to a nebulizer, such as this face mask, or if the patient was on a non-rebreather mask, you can pull the non-rebreather part of the mask off of the mask itself and attach the nebulizer directly to the non-rebreather mask. Now I mentioned there are some circumstances where this nebulizer may not be the ideal way to deliver medication to a patient. And those are instances where we're concerned about the illness that the patient may actually have. So during SARS, during the H1N1, during the flu season, where we're concerned about aerosol generating procedures, or AGP, as the Centers for Disease Control refer to, you want to be particularly cautious about giving patients with difficulty breathing nebulized medication, because in addition to nebulizing the medication, it nebulizes secretions that the patient may be exhaling and puts them into the atmosphere where you're breathing. So particularly in situations where you have a concern about the germs that may be in the patient's lungs, the instance of using small volume nebulizers like this are questionable. And probably if you're interested in giving the patient a bronchodilator medication, the best choice in those situations would be to use a meter dose inhaler that doesn't nebulize the secretions from the patient. Clearly one of the instances where you would want to protect yourself and use some extra respiratory protection are in situations where the patient has an unknown type illness in their lungs and you're administering something that aerosolizes secretions. And those are indications for using respiratory protection for the provider themselves. I'm Mike McAvoy. Thanks for watching.